Hello there. So I was not expecting to make these sword vlog, log vlog things that I'm doing as often as I have, but I've had a pretty busy time in the sword realm of things and have some interesting stuff to show. Well, not necessarily interesting, but I did get something recently that has a opportunity to teach and learn and address a question that I get from time to time, and that is a bear blade. So I recently bought this bear blade uh, it's a polished sword, and I will go into the details about it, maybe show it in just a minute. But uh, every now and again, folks ask me, how do you ship a bare blade? What do you do when you do that? And this is a great example of how you would do said bare blade shipping. Now, the blade I got did not have this little uh, blue thing on the, on the handle or on the tang when I got it. Um, on any note... You can see that the blade is wrapped in newspaper. Newspaper is really good because the, the grid on it is very fine and doesn't tend to scratch polished blades. And it's available and cheap, so there. You can also use uh, the blue shop towels and whatnot are, are also an acceptable substitute for newspaper, but those are more expensive. And then you can see that the blade wrapped in newspaper has some tape and whatnot around it to make a makeshift sheath for the blade. Uh, the newspaper is then kind of bundled up at the end to make something that the tip isn't going to really slice through easily, uh, but at the same time is not like a block of wood. Now, sometimes people put like a block of wood or something like that because they're worried that the postman, uh, you know, might get stabbed or something like that. And that's the precautions noted and good, but at the same time, if you put a really hard substance, what can happen uh, is the blade can jam into it, and then as it ships and rattles around, the tip can break off. That happens on Japanese swords perhaps more than other types of swords, or maybe it's more differentially hardened pieces than other types. I don't know, but the, the tip on these is real, comes to a very fine point, and uh, if you have like a block of wood that it's really close to, it could stick into it and subsequently crack the tip. Uh, on any note, so that's, that's the blade, and then the, the tang is usually open. It's placed on the board, and then some tape is wrapped around the tang, and then the blade is pretty much taped to the board, right? And the only part that's really grabbing onto it is the part around the tang itself. Now, uh, by doing that, you secure the blade to a board and you give a little bit of room here so that in the event something bangs into it, it's banging into the end of this thin piece of wood, as opposed to the blade itself, and the blade is secured to the board so it doesn't, doesn't come off. Now, this uh, shipping tube behind me is what the blade was then put into so that you can, I mean, you can do that, but you don't have to put it in a big secure tube, either a box or something like that, or bubble wrap, you know. But once it's on this board, it's pretty good. This one, as you can maybe see, uh, the Nakago, or the Tang, doesn't have a hole drilled in it yet. Eventually it'll get one, but it doesn't have one now. If the blade you're shipping does have one, then you can drill a hole through the, uh, through, well, through the board and then secure it with a screw or a zip tie or something like that for an extra measure of security that tape really doesn't provide. On any note, that's how you would ship a bear blade in a nutshell, or at least uh, one perspective idea. Some folks have uh, more elaborate ways of doing it, but I've had a good amount of luck. Also, uh, apply some sort of oil to the blade under the newspaper. You don't want to ship blades without oil, you can, but I generally don't, so I, I put the CLP on. I covered that in a different video in terms of what I use, but this one does have some oil on it and uh, it made it to me safe across the country. So I hope that is somewhat useful to you. As for this blade, because I'm sure you're waiting in eager anticipation for sword porn, right? Uh, this is a blade by Josiah Boomershine, more of a collaboration between Josiah and Rick Barrett, and I could not be happier. It is absolutely wonderful. Now I'll show you the sword in a second, but I'm gonna talk about it a little bit, and I wanna keep the sheath on while I talk so that my saliva doesn't get on it and rust it and I don't run into problems. And you'll probably see another video posted on this as I intend to do some project work on it and finish it. Obviously I won't be doing the work because I'm not talented like that, but I'm going to send it off to people that are talented and I'm going to get the sword finished and all done up. Now this is a, a polished blade. It's got a nice Tori Sori. It's got a big three inch Okasaki. Supposedly it's a folded blade, uh, but I don't see a Hada in it. Um, I see what looks like banding to me in the steel. Uh, as surprising as that is, I don't really care if it's folded or not. Um, but supposedly it is a, a folded a folded blade, uh, and 
some of the details in it, maybe when I get better light and better photos, you'll be able to, to see some of those as well. But the Hamon is absolutely stunning. It has a beautifully done bohi. A lot of times with bohi, you'll see little ripples in them if you hold them up in the light and look down the planes, you know, thusly. You'll see that they wiggle all over the place. And this is nice and smooth. It's terminated well. It reminds me of like a Namboka Cho style blade, maybe like even a Kiramaru or something like that. And it is, it is just amazing. I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. Josiah does fantastic polishing work. He does really great sword work. He can make fittings. I've used his services on a number of swords that I've done and I couldn't, you know, he's a great guy to do business with. I'll link his Facebook in the description below. If you have Japanese sword work that you're interested in, um, you know, let him know. I, I think he's a great guy and, uh, you know, gets my, my thumbs up. On any note, I will, uh, I will now pull the sword out and shut up, and you will see some of the details. Not too many because it's a webcam, but you know, you'll see something. Now again, I will, I'll probably be making another video uh, and put it in the project thing that I, I, I do the playlist with other associated projects that I have going on. I really did not expect to be taking on another project given the amount that I have going on. Uh, I know some of you ask if I'm a millionaire, I can assure you all of my, my money goes to swords and I am pretty damn far from it. In fact, uh, this sword is probably worth more than the car I drive. But the, the point is that um, I have a lot of projects, a lot of irons in the fire, and I didn't expect taking this one on as well, but it was just so damn pretty I couldn't resist. And surprisingly, my wife is still married to me and loves me and supports me. So uh, it will get its own kind of video series. I think I have some fittings and whatnot uh, are ready for it. I have a, a lovely Suba from Roman Urban, and I have some fittings from Josiah that were shock or uh, shibuichi which is like a mix of copper and silver and it gives it this kind of really nice dark green grayish blackish looking patina uh, they're pretty spectacular and of course it will be full of swirly mitsudomes all over the place because that's that's kind of my bag that's uh that's most of the sword news that i have right now again i wanted to get out and start doing some more cutting and reviewing these uh ronin swords that i've got but it's been uh unseasonably warm in Minnesota, but it's still winter, so it's cold as hell, and I don't want to go outside and chop water bottles and get all wet in the cold. I might do it anyway, though. I have a weekend, so maybe you'll see some of that stuff in the not-too-distant future. Other news uh, related to swords would be one question I maybe have for a YouTube, the YouTube audience out there, anyone that enjoys watching me ramble on about swords, and that is, I have a couple James Raw Katana. Now, uh, if I'm doing my video editing correctly, they will appear here-ish. Um, if you haven't seen the videos on them, you can check them out. They're just sword porn or more or less sale aids that I have for uh, the eBay auction and stuff that they're up at. But what surprised me about these blades is that I personally think they're really beautiful. I anticipated getting them that I would maybe keep them but probably end up selling them uh, for the simple standpoint that neither neither one of them have a, a size that is suitable to me personally. And that's very subjective. What might fit me might not fit someone else. It's not like it's a size that's unusable by human beings. It's just not what I, I generally tend to prefer. So I bought them for the point of finishing to resell as I had anticipated that there would be a demand 
for some custom sword at a very kind of entry level price. Now, a lot of times, really high end custom, uh, or not custom, but really high end production swords tend to be above a thousand, between a thousand and three thousand dollars is kind of like the high end spectrum for um, mass produced type swords. And mass produced isn't necessarily the fair word either. They're more akin to custom swords than they are production swords. But I think you get what I'm throwing down if you're interested in this type of hobby. They're not, um, they're made individually with one-on-one -on -one attention by a, a known smith. And that's kind of where your, your custom stuff comes in. And then it's mounted up by a guy who only mounts swords and knows how to do all the, all the detail and refining. And the fittings are all kind of along the lines of, of more customized in terms of individually made for the most part. On any note, when I got these swords, I had thought that, hey, I should be able to turn them around and sell them. And I had them up for about $3,000, which is not too far off what they actually cost, uh, cost me to do. And now I've had them for sale for $2,000 for a pretty long time, which is kind of that threshold where it's like, if I saw this for $2,000, I'd be pretty tempted to buy it. So that's as low as I want to go. When I ask, why aren't they selling? I, I know, especially anyone that works in retail or realty is going to tell me, uh, it's always a matter of price. If I list it for $10, of course, I know it's going to sell really quick. But I had anticipated that they would bring a lot more than $2,000, and it seems that that one is even going to be a bit of a stretch. And my question to the audience is really, why do you think that is? Is it uh, related to James Raw? Uh, is it related to the custom work or the colors that I chose? Uh, is it related to a soft market right now? If, uh, if you have any advice for me, I'd certainly appreciate it so I don't make the mistake again. I, I do buy and finish swords and put them up for resale, and, uh, and I would like to... I would like to not lose money on them, which seems to be difficult for me to do. On any note, if you have some uh, suggestions as to why that might be, or have a, have a thought on it, then please let me know. I think they're fucking awesome swords, and I'm really surprised that they haven't moved, because both of them are absolutely lovely, they feel great in the hand. When you, when you look at a custom sword versus a production sword, a lot of times uh, you get the feeling that somebody really thought about how the sword was supposed to feel in your hand. And they have just a, a different vibe to them that's almost intangible and di difficult, honestly, to describe in words if you haven't felt one yourself. Um, and that's kind of the, the vibe I get from these swords. They're custom, they're pretty, they have a lot of detail work and, and refinements that you don't necessarily see on their production-based counterparts. And so I'm, I'm a little surprised that they haven't sold, but uh, not necessarily devastated because they look really nice on my wall. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. That's the end of this sword vlog, log vlog, and uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully some of you find me rambling mildly entertaining or interesting or have to have some sort of uh, value. Anyway, let me know uh, if you have any thoughts. Cheers and thanks for watching.